Hi, it's Michelle from CNC Designs. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in New Zealand. And I would like to show you um, the masking technique to make this lovely um, tulip card. This um, uses the Timeless Tulips stamp set as well as the Tulip Builder Punch. Now the um, term uh, masking, which is what we're going to do, the technique I'm going to show you with this card, can mean several different things with stamping. Um, sometimes it's referring to using a mask or what might be called a stencil to put over something to um, uh, either trace or sponge or color in that image. But in this case, we're doing the opposite, where we're using the mask to prevent color going where we don't want it to be. So I'm going to show you how to make this card, but I'm going to change up the colors on it. And you may have seen this card before. It was shown at the end of um, my video uh, showing you how to make tulips. Um, so making the 3D tulips with the punch. At the end of the video, you'll see this card. And it was in another video that um, had uh, quick tips for fixing mistakes. So if you want to know what mistake I made on this card, you'll have to watch that video to find out. All right, so for this card, um, I'm just using Garden Green. So it's standard card, cut um, with the opening scored so it opens this direction. Sorry, there's a bit of light coming through that um, window there. And then I've got two Whisper White um, size to fit. Um, one is for the outside of the card and the other is for the inside of the card. So um, for whatever country you're in, you would size it down appropriately. Uh, I will be putting measurements as well as the products used. Um, the products will be shown at the bottom of the video and the measurements will be shown in my blog. So have a look at um, paper crafting, papercraftaddiction.blogspot.co.nz for details on um, this card and the materials used. So, Whisper White, same size for the inside and the outside of the card, and Garden Green for the base of the card. Then, I've already gone and pre-cut, um, die-cut, um, this shape, which comes from the Stitched Labels dies. So, this has already been pre-cut, and then I've got a scrap of thick Whisper White that I'm going to use to create, um, to use the punch with the flower and the leaves to put on the front. So let's get started. There's quite a few things need to do. So first um, we'll go ahead and um, do the inside of the card and then we'll get started on the outside of the card. Both of them will use the same um, stamped image. So this is one of the stems that's in the Timeless Tulip set. There's actually two stems in the set, and this is the stem that's curved, but being photopolymer, it's quite easy to shape it different directions. So I'm using this because it's the thicker stem, and I want it to be more straight. So I just simply straighten it up on my block, and if you wanted it more curved, you could even make it more curved. That's the nice thing with the photopolymer. You can shape it however you'd like. So... Um, I will go ahead and stamp that in Garden Green. Once I find my ink, there's my ink. So for the inside of the card, I just thought it looked nice having one little tulip. Um, here I did the tulip on the left-hand side. I think this time I'll try it on the right-hand side. Getting that up a bit more. Okay. Now it goes off the end of the paper, so it doesn't matter if I don't ink up the very end of the stamp. Now with these um, distinctive stamps, they don't always look like they're inked up um, because of all the um, distinction that they show. So when you stamp it down, just keep in mind where um, your top of your flower is going to be. Okay. And then while I have that inked, it's going a bit crooked. Okay, Get a bit of a smudge there, but that's okay. I can hide that with the um, I 
can hide that with one of the leaves. Um, I will go ahead and stamp the image on the front. When you're doing something, trying to get depth into your card, so for your um, flowers, to have the one in the front, you always start with the image that's going to be in the very front, and then you mask it and start stamping the images that you want to appear behind. So you actually stamp it in the reverse of how you would think. So I'm going to stamp the stem in the front first and then stamp all the flowers um, for the background. Okay, so I'll stamp the stem while I'm at it as well. Keeping in mind I don't want it to be too high up because I'm going to have a tulip up the top there. Okay, so just basically in the center. Okay. Now we'll work on the rest of the inside flower. For that, I want to have these other leaves. Now there's three different leaves in this stamp set. The bigger leaf can be cut with the punch, and then it has these two smaller leaves. Um, so they're made so you can have uh, either side going either side of your um, flower, or you could have them either direction, whether you want the skinny or the top part going. Um, so let me get some blocks to stamp these. And I will be going off the side so it doesn't really matter. I could even use the same leaf and then just do it a different direction and it looks like it's a completely different leaf. In fact, I might go the fat side. I'm not liking that fat leaf. I'm liking the skinnier leaf. So I might go that way to kind of cover my smudge up. And I personally think tulips look better with the leaf further down on the branch. So with the photopolymer, because you can see through, you can line things up better. So I can, if I put it too far over, but I, looking straight over the top, I'm going to move it down a bit to get wider part over that smudge. And then I just go down to where I think it should go. And so if I line it up properly, it looks like it's coming right off the edge, and it takes a while. I mean, if, you, if you're new to stamping, you might not get it perfect every time, but you can see through the stamp, so if you just make sure you get closer to it um, as you stamp that. So I'm going to use the same leaf, because I thought that other one looked a bit fat. And I'm just going to turn it over the other way, so it looks like it's coming... It's a different leaf, but it's just the same leaf turned around. So again, I'm just trying to come off the side, and I'm trying to cover up another smudge I did on here. So you can always cover your smudges. There we go. That looks good. So I'll put my green away for now. And I'll clean that stamp. I think I might shut the curtain a bit there because it's getting a bit glary in here. And I'll just pause you while I go shut the curtain. Okay. So now I'm back. I shut that curtain. It's not as glary there. So if I try to show you something close up, you should be able to see it. Okay, so we've still got the inside here. And for the inside flower, I am going to use one of the smaller flowers. And I thought, instead of going with the pink, I'm going to use Seaside Spray. It's very nice um, blue. So we'll use that. That's our front. We'll put that out of the way for now. So this way, um, where I put the flowers, they didn't actually go off the side. So it's best if you tap in different spots on your um, ink pad because if you keep tapping in the center, you use up all the ink there and there's plenty of ink on the edges. So you can't really see that it's inked up, but you will notice. And again, looking straight through the center, I can kind of see where 
the green is at the bottom to line up the center of my flower, the base of my flower rather. And if you can't do that at the beginning, it's a bit of a knack. It takes a little while to get used to it. So there you go. So turns out I've lined it up almost exactly right spot on, as well as those look like they're coming right out at the stem. So it takes a little practice, but using the photopolymer is fabulous because you can see right through there. So now that I'll put that aside. That'll be the inside of our card. So now I'm going to move on to the outside. So that's the front of the card. And um, I need to create a mask. Because I, if I don't create a mask, if I stamp here, the uh, flowers are going to go all over that stem. But I want it to look like they're behind the stem. So you just create the mask with the ink that you were using, or any ink at all. And what you have to do to create a mask is you use sticky pads. So the ones that peel off, they have sticky on part of them. And you want the mask, or most of the mask, to actually go on the sticky side. So you can use it to stick down to cover what you um, don't want ink to go onto. So I've inked this up. And I don't need the whole image there because I didn't do the whole image. I just need as much as will fit on there. As well as I'm not going to stamp at the top. So... Um, as much as I can get onto the sticky part and just stamp that there. And then what you do is you then cut your mask out. So you want it to be as close to the line as possible because this is actually going to cover up your um, act image so you don't want to be um, over the line but you want to be as close as you can because then it gives a better um, illusion of things coming out the back. Now the top doesn't really matter how close we get because I'm not going to be um, I'm not going to stamp that top part I'm stamping at the bottom so we'll just roughly cut that Oop. hard to cut on camera and then again as close as possible to that image. So if you're doing a lot of cards, you can just keep reusing the mask. But if you're only doing the one-off card, then you know you just throw it away. Sometimes um, there's so much ink on the mask you can't really tell um, where it is anymore. So if there's more sticky on that, you could use it for another mask. So I've cut this really close to the edge. And now I will place it over my existing stem. Okay. There we go. So now my stem actually has another stem on top of it. So from there, I can start stamping my flowers. Now, I will need to have some masks for the flowers um, because I will be stamping over them um, a few times. So I'll just get my images ready. So I'm not going to stamp the big flower. That is going to be just for the center, um, for this flower that's standing up from the center. I will be stamping the two other sizes. And start out with the bigger one and you just choose where you want it to go so I I know I'm gonna have words coming here so I kinda want maybe a, a bunch of flowers coming up about that high let me just check yeah about that high so you just stamp your images wherever you'd like now I um, to give it more interest in depth I've actually stamped off as well, so I'll stamp the one image, and so see it's gone over the center, and when we pull away the mask, it'll look like it's um, behind the flower. So I'm going to then um, do another image further down, um, maybe over here, 
and then I will just stamp again down here. So the first few times you stamp, as long as you're not stamping over a previous image, you're fine. You don't need to mask it. So see, I have a nice, lovely, lighter color there. And then maybe I will come in like that. All right. And so what you need to do is you need to create a mask. So I've just got old um, post-it notes. You have to stamp again where the sticky side is. So if I stamp this, I can stamp this like here. So there's one mask. And then I'm going to, because it still has ink on it, I'm just going to go and stamp it over there. Okay, so at the moment it doesn't look like a lot. So um, <clears throat> I've got my smaller image, which I can come in and stamp one of those. I won't stamp it there. I'll do my mask first. So my smaller image, I'm just going to create the mask here. Now you're going to need more than one mask um, because you're going to want to cover up multiple images while you stamp. Um, the other colors next to them. But instead of stamping lots and lots of post-it note pads, what you do is you just stamp one of them and then you just take a bunch of them off in one go, like I've just taken three off, and then you can just cut the mask out, same as we did with the stem, cut around the edges, right around the edges, right through the name Avon. The reason I have these is I used to be an Avon representative until they left Australasia a couple of years ago. So there is no Avon in New Zealand and Australia. Um, if you're watching from somewhere else, they left the country. But that's why I have post-it notes with that information on it. And that's why I'm quite happy just to cut through them because they're not relevant any longer. So again, cut as close as you can. It just gives it a better illusion of um, flowers behind if it comes right up to the edge. But you don't want it to overlap your actual flowers. So pardon the time of me cutting, but for those that have never done masking before, you might want to see it done from beginning to end. Okay, so that's that. And we'll just quickly cut this other one out. So if you are doing lots of these, then just hold on to the mask. Sometimes I just leave them in the um, stamp set if I'm going to do more. But once you use them for a while, the stickiness does wear off. Um, some people have done uh, masking just simple circle, and then you sponge around it. When you take it off, you have a lovely um, sun. Um, just basically masking is covering up um, where you don't want the ink to go. So it's a great way to preserve part of your image. Okay. So now that I've done that, I've actually got multiple images. So for this design, it's best to work from one side. So I've got that done. So one stamped and I got two more that aren't stamped, but it doesn't matter. So now we're just going to mask up one side of images and I'm going to carry on stamping. And then you just have to remember to move your um, masks as you go to put more stamps in different spots. So that one's right there. And then even the bits coming off the page need to be masked. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with my smaller stamp. And I'm just going to go and see, deciding where to stamp sometimes is the difficult part. So now I'm stamping right over. Now we, when you're stamping with a mask, you want to give more pressure right where you're going over the mask part because otherwise you'll have a distinct line. So try to give it as much pressure as you can. I forgot I was actually going to stamp off. Um, 
So I might do one over here and then maybe there. So as long as you're not overlapping the same um, flower, you can carry on and put flowers in different spots. And then maybe I'll just stick one coming up right about there. Now, I don't have to worry about going over that part because that's on the mask, so it's not going to be seen. Okay, now take my little guys and I will carry on masking. And as I said, it's best to just do one side at a time. So these guys are going to go over. Sometimes it's better to use um, a darker color post-it note so you can tell what's been stamped and what hasn't because using white pretty soon I'm going to be confused as to what's actually got ink versus what doesn't so I'm just going to cover that one down there <coughs> and come in with the bigger stamp so I'm going to think I'll come in there, give it good pressure. Alright, and I'm kind of liking that already. I'm thinking I might want to put something down here. So I will come in maybe a bit higher that way and then I will just try to fill in that little gap at the bottom okay. now to give you a little sneak peek of what we're doing here if I take the masks off this side you can see that we have all these beautiful flowers that appear to be overlapping. I'm going pretty dark on that side by the looks of it. Didn't mean to do that, but I will have the banner going there, so I might go for some lighter um, images up the top just to try to um, get it to flow uh, look better. So again, mask where you have images that you can see. And I'm just going to build it up slightly with some lighter colors. So I don't have to worry about masking down there because I'm not going to stamp down there. And I'm just putting that roughly there. So what I'm going to do, I think I'll come in with some lighter ones. So I think I will pop a dark one like right about... That got a mask? Oh, it has a mask. Now I might put a dark one right about there, and then that will leave me with some light to go up the top. It's very light, lighter than I thought. Now this, because I'm only going to do the top of it, I'm just going to stamp off here, and then I'm just going to um, mask that. I noticed it was there right before I stamped, and then just do the light one there. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. And tearing all those off, you can see lots of different colored flowers going on. So now I'm going to work on this side here. I'll try to put more light ones because and quite dark so put them there and I even need to put one there because that one's been covered but I'll work on this side first that one's coming up and so I can just stick that there because I just need to cover where I've already stamped it doesn't matter that it's not the same exact ma mask okay so on this side I don't have a lot of these guys here um, 
So I think I'll go with that one. And then I think I will stamp off. And then come in there. This one goes very light when you stamp it off. Oh, that's a bit darker. <coughs> Cover that up. I'm just going to put a dark one just peeking through here. I'm going to put it down low so it fills in the gap a bit better. So basically, you just want to fill it all in, or you could have white space if that's what you were wanting to do. And now I'm going to mask over that one. And is that white? I guess light. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with a dark one. Just peeking out that side. Yeah. And then I think I will come in with a final Cover that mask up. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. And you're still with me and not too bored. I'm going to stamp off there and then I'm going to stamp. Uh, I think I just have one peeking through. Okay, so let's see how we did here. Let's see if we like that. You can always add more if you want. So, those are those. So, hopefully, you can see I've got, I went quite dark here and not so dark there. Um, but that's okay. I should have stamped off more. I wasn't thinking. But um, I might actually try to do that one slightly darker. Um, the one at the bottom. Do stamping off and just I uh, can line it up because it's photopolymer and just go in like that. Oh, well, didn't really help, but kind of interesting. All right, so I think I've done enough flower stamping there. And as you, as I said, it's probably better if you use a colored post-it note because after a while you can't quite tell what's the flower and what's the knot. But we can peel this off to reveal the flower coming up the center stem. And then we can decorate the front of it. So for the front, I am um, doing the big flower. If you watched any of my other tulip um, punch videos, um, you should come in from the side there, so um, you are able to um, you punch at the bottom. So when you bring it in, you don't have to slide it down so much. Um, so I'm going to do a couple leaves to start with, and again, you need to make sure you know which direction you're stamping so you don't have to waste your paper so I'm stamping that way and so I'm just gonna do a couple leaves in the garden green so as long as there's a bit of white space around them it'll be fine and then another one get a bit of white space Those are my leaves done. And I can just slide them in here and punch it out. Line it up. That's the one. And then the other leaf. So when you are using a punch, make sure you know which direction you're sliding the punch in so you don't waste your cardstock have to start all over again. Okay, 
So now I can come this way or could slide the other way with um, my tulip. I'm thinking what would be the least waste. So the tulip is going to be in the blue. I'm just going to put that up there to waste as little paper as possible. I love the images. They just come out so well with these distinctive stamps. Some people have trouble with them, and I think a lot of it has to do with, now see, I've got myself a problem because that one's going too far down. Um, some of it has to do with um, that your ink pad is too juicy. Okay, that's better. So um, you just have to watch out. You're not using a very juicy ink pad. If you're having that problem, try sponging over your um, cardstock instead. So I'll get our leaves. I've got our flower. Let's tidy up a bit. Okay. So that's the that ain't done. And then I'm just going to stack the words. Clean and then so I can stamp the words. And the words are going on my pre cut there it is. So I'm gonna pop the words on there in memento black. I like using that doesn't stain the stamps and it gives you a good image. So I'm stamped the words from the set. It says, what a beautiful difference one single life makes, which is why I have that single stem coming out the center. I think it looks quite good that way. And so most people would stamp the cardstock first and then go cut it out but to save on time, I pre-cut, pre-die cut that image. There we go. And again, line it up. Um, if you're having trouble lining things up, don't fret because it does take practice. I've been stamping for over 20 years and been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for over three years now. So it takes a little practice. Okay, so now we're going to build our um, card front. Because there's um, ribbon and stuff, you put that down. Now, I was thinking I might try to do something different because there is the seaside spray, um, is that right? Seaside spray ribbon. And I thought I would use that to give a bit of shimmer to the front since that's the stamp set ink we're using. So with that one, with the ribbon, you don't need to wrap it all the way around. So to save on ribbon, just look at the length of um, what you're covering and just give it a snip. And then the other one is the flax ribbon, the white flax ribbon. I thought that would be nice with the peeking through of the flowers. Again, we don't need to um, have a lot of it, just enough to go over the edges. So <clears throat> on the back, to hold your ribbon in place. It's always best to use tape, so double-sided tape or the snail, because um, uh, glue does not stick very well to ribbon. Um, and in fact, sometimes thinner ribbon, it can actually distort it. Um, so you figure out where you want that to go, roughly on the front. Right about there looks good. And then you just bend the edges over to catch where you've put the sticky. Okay, so... And don't worry about securing it too firmly because it will secure down nicely once you um, attach the card front. So for this one, I'm actually going to weave it through the back, through the little opening there, just to give it a bit of sneaking through color, which doesn't 
Um, it's the same color as the flower, so we don't want too much color over doing it. Okay, let's twist that around. Okay, so that's just going through and it's going to go down there. Okay, but before we stick it down, um, two things. One, I'll put my double-sided tape on the back here because I'll put dimensionals on there and it's harder to put the tape on when you've got dimensionals um, holding the front up. You might squish it. So I'll put our tape on there and there. Hair and tape. And as the name implies, you can just stick it down and tear it off. It's fabulous stuff. Some people have issues with ragged ends. If you are having, um, if you are a bit um, OCD and you don't like the ragged ends, you can take a block and hold the block there and pull it against the block and it'll come straight. But you don't need to get your scissors out to cut it. That just takes up um, a lot of time and fussing about with the scissors. So this is perfect for our mini dimensionals. Just pop a few around the edges here. in slightly different positions so it can hold it differently and so I'm not sticking them right on the ribbon because they won't um, stick very well to the ribbon anyway but this way it'll go either side and hold it in place so first I will pop that down and get those off and so because I didn't stick them on the ribbon, the ribbon still has room to move, so I can stick it on the back. So we'll try to line this up straight. I'm really bad at doing things straight. I always seem to stick them down crooked. Okay, so just press it where you have the dimensionals. There we go. And there, so you can... Ah, oh, see? I did it crooked. I knew I knew I was crooked. There, hold it down. There we go. I think that's straighter. Might be the flowers. So this tape will actually hold the um, hold the ribbon in place. And um, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, I endorse the tab method, which is um, using a tab to um, stick things down when you're using tear and tape because then if the corners if you get it crooked on the corners which as you can see I'm prone to doing things crookedly um, then you can still pull it up so I will just pull this one up here and just stick that one down there There we go. So let's stick this on the front. Where's our front? There it is. Always make sure you open the card first so you know that you're putting it on the right direction. And so for this one, I'm just going to try to line it up centrally, giving a little bit of background card. So if you're doing a colored card back, you don't really need to have um, a lot of colored layers because the, the back of the card becomes a layer. So that way, if I had messed it up, I could easily pull it up because the whole side's not stuck down. But it looks straight enough for me. So then you just pull your tabs up, rub down the tape, and they come up really nicely with the Stampin' Up! Tear and Tape. I have used other ones in the past and it doesn't come up, up very well it rips so there you go so that's that's the front and then I just glued these down because um, I decided I didn't want too much dimension on here it looks quite nice with the shimmer so a bit of glue sometimes the ends get sticky Pull it out the end. 
go. Bit of glue. And I always use glue if I want to have wiggle room. So I'm going to tuck this one down a bit. Yeah, tuck that down a bit. And so that just comes up. And it also covers up some of the color over there. If you want to make sure it sticks down, you can just go in with your foam folder. And so even though these two are the same, if you do them different directions, they almost look like they're different leaves. Okay, so you don't need a lot of glue on there. So I'm just gonna bring this up a bit, coming up higher to where the flower is actually going to be. And give it a bit of a rub. Some people don't like the white going over there, but I don't mind. And now some dimensionals on the top here. With your dimensionals, when you get around the edge, you have a nice big strip that you can always use for things. So I just go through and I just do slices in there to give me various size extra pieces that I can use on different projects. So it's quite, um, quite handy to have. And there's no waste. That's why I like them. So pop a bit there. And then go there. Boop. And then another piece. And about there. So you don't have to go overboard because, you know, unless you're giving it to a child, nobody should really um, be pulling at your flower. Okay, so you can pop the flower there, or it looks like it's at an angle, but you can't really see that once it's covered up. So just pop it down. There you go, beautiful flower on the front. And we don't want to forget the inside. So we will do our inside bit. And um, as well as you don't really need to secure it firmly on the inside either because um, nobody's really going to go pulling it apart. So if you're short on adhesives, just one on either side is sufficient. Now I use the scissors just to um, peel up the edges. Just slide it until it pulls up. Again, tab method. As even on the inside, when you think you got it straight, it's not always straight. As well as make it go the right way up. Check you got your front going the right way. And you can just... A bit rough down there. Okay, so there's that corner there and that corner there. So when you're happy with the space you got going around it, you can just pull your tab off. So this one, you could add a sentiment on the inside if you want, maybe a birthday or something like that. You can have a big happy birthday. But basically, that's the card done. So those are two different um, color combinations, the same method. Um, and you can see how different they come out depending on which ink you're using. So I think my um, lovely lipstick ink was a bit drier than my Seaside Spray, which is um, a newer ink pad. So it does give you a different effect. You can kind of see same exact stamp, but different effect depending on um, the juiciness of your stamp pad. So hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a thumbs up. I will, I will be putting information onto my blog um, with a list of all the products used in this um, demonstration. And um, I'll show the products at the bottom of the um, video as well. So make sure you subscribe to see more videos in the near future and go back and see if you can find out what the mistake was for this um, pink tulip card. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you would like to buy any products, please contact your Stampin' Up! demonstrator. If you live in New Zealand and you don't already have a demonstrator, please look me up on my website. I'd be happy to be your demonstrator. And right now with Celebration, there's lots of fabulous um, freebies 
that you can get for purchasing. So this little catalog has all these free items that you get from just uh, purchasing um, from Stamping Up. You also have extra benefits for being a host up till March 31st. You can get that lovely um, uh, ladybug stamp set or ladybird if you're on the other side of the world. And there's also a fabulous uh, bonus joining um, offer for anybody that like to join Stamping Up. I'd love you to join my team if you'd like that. So contact me or contact your demonstrator. Thanks for watching. Bye.